OK, I've built the user interface for my Hangman game, and I'm nearly ready to start coding. But before I do, I just want to see what it does. Now, I'm making sure, first of all, that I've got the form selected, and I can run it by clicking this little green button here, or I can press the function key F5. So there's my game running. But of course, it doesn't do anything yet. So let's write some code. I'll close the form, which will take me back to the VBA environment. Now, I want to write a program to set up a new game, and that'll happen when the user clicks on this button. To write that program, from the design environment here, I can double-click the button. That's taken me into a module behind the form, and it's given me the top and the bottom of a sub-procedure. A sub-procedure is just another name for a program. And I can write my code in between the top line and the bottom line. Just looking at it first, I can see that the name of the sub-procedure is CMD New Game underscore click. CMD New Game, that's the name I gave to the command button. Underscore click means that the program will run when I click on the button. Now you mustn't change this name because if you do, the program won't be connected to the button anymore. All right, so let's suppose that this game only has one word. Now, I know that sounds a bit silly, but it'll illustrate some principles that you need to know. I'm going to declare a variable. A variable is a named location in the computer's memory. I've given it the name stWord. stWord because it's going to be a string variable. It's going to store a string of characters. And I can write some code to put a word into that variable. I'm going with cat for now. So what have I done? I've announced that I want to name a piece of memory, and now I'm assigning a value to it. stWord equals cat means take the string cat and put it into that piece of memory, put it into that variable. Just to test it's working, I'm going to output that word directly onto the screen. And I can do that using a message box command, like this. So let's test the program now. Just as I did before, I can run it by pressing the little green button here. And it's outputting the word cat. So we're getting somewhere. I can double click the button again to return to that program. Instead of outputting the word, what I'd really like to output is the length of the word. How many letters it's got. And I can do that by wrapping this up inside a special function, like this. That's called the len function. It will get you the length of a string. Let's try that. So, the word cat has got three letters. Now, it's not much of a game, if it's always the word cat. What I really want here is a set of words that my program can choose from. So I'm going to declare a very special type of variable that can hold a set of words. It's called an array variable, like this. So that's going to set up 10 locations in memory. But they've all got the same name, st animal list. No prizes for guessing what I'm going to store in here. 1 to 10 means that I want to store 10 items of data. If I said 1 to 5, then I could store 5 items of data. Right, now what I'm going to do is put some data into this variable. So that's the code to populate my array variable. Now I can select an item from the array variable by referring to it with its index number. 
So what I'm going to do now is, instead of putting the word cat here, I'm going to select one of the items from the array variable. So what are we doing? We're taking item 4 from the array variable and putting it into this variable. And then we're going to output its length on the screen. Let's give that a whirl. And my program has crashed. What's this? Sub or function not defined. It's a little bit cryptic, but what it means is it can't find the thing I'm talking about. And I can see the problem now, actually. Let's just dismiss this message. I'm in what's called break mode. I can see the yellow here. I don't need to worry about break mode just yet. I'm going to reset the program because I can see the problem. Back to the code. It's this, isn't it? I spelt animal list wrong. So let's just fix this. Notice when I move off the line, if I've typed it correctly, it should recapitalize it. I need two L's. And there we go. I can see I've typed it correctly now. Let's try it this time. Yep, four, four, always four because it's always the same word. Let's change the number and just see what happens. I'm going to select seven. So animal number seven is a monkey. What do we expect the message to say now? Six, because that's how many letters there are in the word monkey. Now, this is not ideal, of course, because it's always going to choose the same word. What I could do is ask the user to type in a number between 1 and 10. Not ideal, but it'll get us started. I'm going to declare another variable. And I'm using the data type integer. An integer is a whole number. That's a number which doesn't have a decimal point with anything after it. And I'm going to ask the user to type in something that will go into this variable. I'm going to use an input box command. So let's give that a try. Here we go, enter a number between 1 and 10. I'm still getting the monkey's length. But what I can do now is take this number, the user typed in a number, it went into here, and I copy that and paste it here. So whatever the user types in goes into I selection and we select that animal. Let's try that. Enter a number between 1 and 10. I'll go for 10. 6. That's the word budgie. The word budgie has a length of 6. Let's try again. A 3. I think that's a horse. One more. Number 2 has got a length of three. I think that's a dog. So what are we doing then? We're selecting a word from that array variable and telling the user how long the word is. We're not home and dry yet, but we're well on the way. Let's just close up some of this white space and we'll make some refinements next time.